What's going on, fam? It's your boy, Anthony O'Neill, and welcome back to the show where y'all already know. Here at the table, we have a real, relevant, and relatable conversation. And today, we're going to keep those three things going because we're going to talk about what do millionaires do? What do millionaires do and do not do? And if you want to be a millionaire, I want you to drop a comment below. Say, I want to be a millionaire. And today, this show is for me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure to share, share this video and, and help inspire the world. <laughs> I love it. So today I want to talk about what do millionaires do and what do they not do? And I'm talking about what do the average net worth millionaire? So your Beyonce's, Jay-Z's, your uh, doctors, your lawyers, your school teachers, um, these everyone. Everyone who has assets that add up to a million dollars or more, what are they doing? What are they not doing? And I just did a little bit of research. I asked some of my mentors, what are they doing? And here's one of the things that came off the top. All right. They do not do this. They don't buy brand new cars on their way to building their net worth of a million dollars. All right. They don't do it. Why spend all this money if you're making $50,000 a year, $35,000 a year, or making $100,000 a year, and you go buy a $80,000 car, you go buy a $40,000 car, and as soon as you drive off the parking lot, it depreciates its value instantly. You just gave away money. You don't, you can't afford to just give away $5,000, $10,000, $15,000. The bare minimum for me, my car has to be at least three years old, at least three years old. And for myself, I'm going to be honest, I don't go any older than four years old. So right in between that three to four mark, and the only way I'm going to go to that two-year-old car is if it's a crazy deal. But nine times out of ten, your boy goes to a three to four-year-old car, and it's and the value, the value of the car will never be no more than 50% of my average salary. So if you make $40,000 a year, your car should not be worth anything more than $20,000. You need to be at $19,999. And if you need to add 99 cents on there, go ahead. All right? But it should not be more than 50% of your salary. My mentor, Dave Ramsey, did that for years. Now, with him being a millionaire and, make, and making multi-millions a year, is he buying brand new cars? Yes. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that because he can afford uh, to do that. People like you and I, yeah, and I make good money. We can't afford. I don't want to lose five, ten thousand dollars right now. No, no, no. Now, when I'm making five, ten, fifteen million dollars a year, I may do it. I don't know. But that's the number one thing that I really learned from all millionaires on their journey to becoming who they are. They didn't buy brand new cars. You know, it's another thing they didn't do. They didn't become house poor, you guys. They didn't buy. Um, a house that they really couldn't afford. Uh, they didn't buy this big old house and then no furniture. Uh, someone who I know, um, um, I know him personally, bought this big old home, but then when I walked in for months, and I mean for months, uh, this individual didn't have any furniture. No furniture in the house, no chairs to sit on, no beds to sleep on, just a bed in him and his wife's um, um, room, but when, when he had company over, oh, man, we were wowed by the house, but had no furniture. I, I was so, I said, like, what are you doing? Like, wh what? Listen, you guys, your house payment should not be more than 25% of your take-home pay. Not your gross, take-home pay, okay? This leaves you with a large margin to really enjoy your life and not live paycheck to paycheck. Don't go out there and buy a $500,000 house when you really can only afford a $275,000 house, maybe. Don't go out there and buy a $275,000 house if you can't afford $100,000 when you should be getting a $150,000 house. What about this? Don't buy a house if you can't afford a house. There's nothing wrong with renting. Renting an apartment, renting a townhome, or renting a home. There's nothing wrong with renting, all right? 
You know, and here's another thing too. You know, a lot of these things are coming up right now with like these susus and these micro apps and oh man, invest into this and give me five hundred dollars a day and get three more people into this thing and you're gonna grow up and get all this money and you're gonna in five weeks you'll have ten thousand dollars or invest into this app and you'll save money. You'll be able to do this and do that. No, millionaires weren't doing that, and they're not doing it right now. Dave Ramsey's not investing into no susu. Dave Ramsey's not investing into no micro acorn apps. You know, Bill Gates ain't doing that. No, these guys are just being smart. They're talking to their financial advisors and they're living below their means and they're investing where the market tells them to invest. They're buying real estate. They're doing all kinds of stuff. They're not trying to get richer quicker. Ooh, let me sit back. I like that. They're not trying to get richer quicker. Why? Why are we, the average people, why are we looking for the get rich quick scheme? How can we just can't be wise and just enjoy the journey? Because I don't know about you, but when I do build my million dollar wealth, I don't want to lose it quick. If I got there quick, I can actually lose it quicker. Mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. And here's a, another one that I really liked. I was actually talking to um, my mentor, Dave Ramsey, and another one of our mentors um, who's in the hip hop industry. <clears throat> and actually another one of my good friends um, uh, who plays in the NFL. And a lot of them said, man, I couldn't do it alone. You know, they surrounded themselves with a dope team, with a dope squad. Uh, one of them surrounded himself with a financial advisor that is just dope. They meet about once every other week. But like, hey, what are we looking at? What's the stock market doing? What can we do? Um, he surrounded himself with someone that gets into paintings, like they enjoy paintings and they're like, hey, I, I actually want to look into this. So he surrounded himself with just a solid squad of people, a squad of people who are experts in their own way that can help you out. You know, while you're building wealth, I want to encourage you to get around experts, get around experts who can bring something to the table that you do not have. Okay. I want you to go to my website, anthonyneal.com forward slash expert. And I'll make sure to put this in the description below. If you have some money to invest and you want to invest it, don't go to cheap way out. Stop trying to get rich quick. No, sit down with someone who I personally trust, who I have personally uh, vetted and let them be a part of your squad. You're trying to purchase a home or you're trying to sell your home. Don't do it on your own. Get a, uh, an endorsed local provider that's someone who I believe that will help you. I just recently sold my house, y'all, and I got $25,000 more than what I thought my house was worth because of my squad, because of an expert that knew that space better than me and said, A.O., I can get you right. Trust me. Millionaires do not become millionaires because they did it all on their own. They didn't answer every phone call. They didn't answer every email. They didn't hire every employee. They didn't sign every single deal. They didn't make every single deal. No, they surrounded themselves with people who were smarter than them in certain areas and together they won. You can do that. And you know, here's the last thing. And I'm honestly just picking this up myself. They didn't care what other people thought about them. They didn't care about what other people thought. I'm saying one more time. They didn't give a crap about what other people thought about them. For years, I struggled with that. For years, I thought I had to, you know, be be liked by everyone. I would read y'all's comment on the YouTube channel. And I was like, man, maybe I shouldn't do that. Man, maybe I shouldn't say that. Or, or dude, hey, yo, maybe you should have said that differently. No, I don't care. I don't care. I have been called to do what I what I am doing. I've been called to talk about money. I've been called to the hip hop culture. I've been called to address racism where it's wrong. I've been called to help you win with your life. And if you don't like the way I'm doing it, I respect it, but I'm not gonna change who I am because God told me to do this. Millionaires do not care what people say about them because they know what their purpose is. They know where they're going and they know what they're going to do. And I don't care about you all, but if you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be successful, you have to do the same thing. The only person that should matter to you. I'm just, look at me. Let me get closer. I can't get closer because I'm way over here. 
but I want you to look at me in my eyes. The only person you should be trying to impress is one God, because he's the one who made you. He's the one who gave you your assignment on life. So his opinion about you does matter. The next is yourself. You got to look at yourself in the mirror every single day. You got to wake up every single day and look at yourself in the mirror. You have to be proud with what you said, with what you did, and how you did it, and how you said it. Because here's the truth. You ain't going to please everyone. And I know that. I did a white panel a couple of weeks ago, and I had so many hate mails and comments. Or you should have said this. You shouldn't have done that. This is ridiculous. I'm so disappointed in you, Anthony. Man, if I really was that emotionally into that stuff, I would have not slept for two weeks. But I know what I'm called to do. And I know I'm called to help people, to bring hope, to bring inspiration, to bring aspiration. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's what you need to do. Whatever your calling is, don't worry about nobody. Because successful people are really not worried about what we have to say about them, which is probably why they're very successful and very wealthy. So we talked about some things that, that they're not doing. Um, and I love that. But now let's talk about some things that that they are doing. You know, and here's the very first thing that, that they are doing. Um, they're reading and they're feeding their mind with a bunch of of stuff that will help them grow. So they're not watching TV. What they're doing is they're replacing TV with education, with podcasts, with books, uh, with documentaries, with um, something that's gonna feed their business. You know why? Because they understand their mind is their number one asset. Their mind is their business first and foremost. So what they put into here comes out of here and they see through these eyes. And I love that. So lately, I've been reading two books a month. It's been hard, but I'm telling you right now, my grammar has actually gotten better. I feel like a little nerd, to be honest. Like, I want to go buy me some glasses because I feel so intelligent because I'm growing my business and I'm seeing it come out through my words. I'm seeing it come out through my actions and I'm loving where I'm going because I'm growing. And there's nothing wrong with watching TV. I'm not saying they're not watching TV at all. But what I am saying is they're putting more into them of what they want to see come out of. What are you doing? Are you growing? What podcast have you listened to? What book have you read within the last year? What are you doing? Okay. So one of my good friends, Chris Hogan, I wrote a book called Everyday Millionaire. I'm going to link that below because I really want you to get this book, Everyday Millionaires. He studied about 10,500 individuals who um, are everyday millionaires, and their net worth is more than a million dollars. You see, the average millionaire hit the million dollar mark for the first time at 49 years old after decades of hard work. And you guys, you can do this. As a matter of fact, you can do this actually earlier than 49. Because 85% of millionaires were regular workers. All right, listen, regular workers, school teachers, uh, firefighters, police officers, uh, welders, you name it. You know, and a third never made six figures in a year. Hear me clearly. A third of these millionaires who he interviewed never made six figures in a year. But their net worth is more than a million dollars. Sounds good to me. This gives me hope. Gives you hope. You can make $50,000 and still become an everyday millionaire. So let's talk more about what they're doing because I really want you to watch this. Here's the number one common thing that I've heard from millionaires. Millionaires have a vision. Okay. They have a clear vision. They have a clear vision that turns into uh, seasonal goals from seasonal goals they have habits daily habits so these daily habits ha help them meet their seasonal small goals those goals help them reach their vision their vision can be you know i want to start a business um, five years from now so every year they had a goal i have to meet this goal every single year and then every single day there were daily habits that helped them meet that yearly goal and that yearly goal helped them get to the ultimate five-year vision 
If you really want to build your net worth up to a million dollars, if you really want to become successful, if you really want to get maybe your income up to six figures, you got to have a vision followed by some goals, followed by some daily habits. Those daily habits will get you to your goals. Your goals will get you to your vision. And then when you hit that vision, you create another vision and you create more goals and you create more daily habits. Every single millionaire that I know do those things. But it starts with a clear vision. And then they work themselves backwards. And another one of those vision is I want to invest. Because they understand that, you know what, the power of compound interest, they understand that, you know, um, if I invest, I'll get interest. If I invest, this is money that's just growing while, while I'm sleeping. That's another thing millionaires do. They invest. They invest. And you know what? It sounds boring. Oh, my gosh. Why do I want to invest into this 401k? It's called free money. Why do I want to get my check and then turn around and give, you know, six thousand dollars of that away a year to put into a, a, a growth stock mutual fund? Uh, why? Because it's going to grow. Millionaires are looking for ways to grow their money, not just sit on their money and go buy the latest things, go out and have a, a lot of fun. No, let me tell you what they're doing. They're thinking about when they turn 60, 70, 80 years old. They're thinking about the, the season uh, that will come to where they can't work. Are you thinking about that? Are you thinking about that time when you're 80 years old and your kids are helping you out? And the decision is, do I put my mom or dad into a home or do I just hire some help for my mom and dad because my mom and dad has money? True story. I was in New York and out there for a media hit about a couple of years ago. And I came back to my hotel room and a young, I call her young, but she was wiser. She was about like 88 years old. Um, this lady was cleaning up my hotel room. And when I come inside the hotel room, you guys, she is moving slow. She was walking around my bed to get to the other side of the bed to finish making it up. And I promise you, it took her maybe 20 seconds to get from this side of the bed to the other side of the bed. And I immediately felt guilty that this wiser woman was cleaning up this younger man's room. And she looked like she was in pain. I go inside the room and tell her, you know what, ma'am, don't worry about it. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. I said, I'm good. Just give me some lotion. It's cold outside. I'm black and I'm ashy. That's all I need from you. And she said, baby, thank you. She started walking towards the door and she got closer to the door and she turned around. I'm sitting on the couch and she says, young man, use your youthfulness wisely. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, no, 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 don't say yes. Just do it. He said, because young man, I'm here because I didn't invest into my future when I was in your age. When I was your age, I didn't invest into my future. I didn't make all the right decisions. So now I have to do this just so I can live. I don't want that to be you and I don't want that to be me. Millionaires invest. Millionaires set aside money for their future. Not just for their future, but for their kids' future. Not just for their kids' future, but for their kids' kids' future. Invest. May be boring. Yeah, you may not be able to enjoy the money right now, but your future self will tell yourself, thank you. I promise you that much. It will. Another thing that I really love, it was just dope, actually. Millionaires take care of the body. You know, they eating good. They're taking some supplements. They're seeing their doctor on a regular basis. They working out. Let me say that again. Hold on. They going to the gym. They getting up in the morning. They going running. They working out, okay? Listen, if, if you really want to enjoy your life, take care of the body. You see, if you take care of this body, it's going to save you money in the future. You won't have to go to the doctor as much. You won't have to take so much medicine. You won't have maybe as much surgery and much issues coming up if you start eating healthy. And let me be real with you on the show, because this is a real relatable and relevant show. I got to eat healthier. 
I have to. I know that. I'm working on that right now. But your boy still work out. I got to be sexy now. Don't get it twisted. But I understand one thing. I can work out all day long. When it comes to this body, we can drink all the water we want. We can, we can work out every single day. But if we're not eating the right things and putting the right things to fuel this body, we're going to be hurt. And it's like now that's something that one of my experts, one of my squad members um, taught me. A lot of people eat to enjoy, but really you're eating to fuel the body. And if you put the right fuel in this body, it will go and go and go as long as it can. But if you put the wrong kind of fuel, the cheap kind of fuel in your body, yeah, your body will go. And then you know what? You'll even feel like everything is okay. I took sweet tea and lemonade out of my diet um, throughout the week. I only drink it now on the weekend. Now I'm only drinking water. And I hate the taste of water. Let me be real with you. I hate it. But you know what? I'm not going to lie. I sleep better. Um, I feel more energized. And when I go to the gym, I'm even sweating more. You know why? Because my body is operating the way that it should be. Millionaires actually enjoy taking care of their temple. Are you taking care of yours? That's a great question. Here's another one that I, I, I would say this is not just millionaires, but this is just successful people, period. Successful doctors, successful lawyers, successful school teachers, wealthy people, everyday millionaires, um, and even myself. And I want to start it off by saying this. The greatest enemy to your success is your excuse. The greatest enemy to your success is you. Millionaires know how to tell themselves no. Millionaires know how to get in front of the mirror and tell themselves no. Nope, I'm not buying that bag. Nope, I'm not buying that car. Nope, I don't care what she says. Do not do it. Nope, do not fall for peer pressure. Nope, you're not going to do that. Nope, I'm not going to. Nope, 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 nope. And that's the hardest thing to do. I can tell my friend no easy. I don't have to respond to the text message. But I got to look at myself in the mirror every single day, two, three, four, five times a day. And I have to be honest with myself. I have to tell myself no today so that tomorrow I can tell myself yes. When you're in the store, when you're about to buy something and you know you shouldn't be doing it, are you strong enough to sit there and tell yourself no? And check this out. Let's say you told yourself yes. Are you strong enough to check yourself and say, you know what? You should not have done that. Fix it. But the greatest enemy to your success, my success, is our excuse. It's us. Us. I am where I am today because I wasn't willing to tell myself no at 19, at 20. I knew I should not have been chilling with that chick that I spent all that money on. I knew I shouldn't be worried about, you know, those brothers I was trying to impress. I knew I shouldn't be putting um, all these wheels and stuff on my car. I, I knew it, but I wasn't strong enough to tell myself no. Millionaires know how to tell themselves no and not only just no but millionaires also know and what they also do is you know what I need help millionaires know how to go to other people and say you know what I'm smart in this area but I'm not smart in this area I need help millionaires have financial experts I, and I'm telling you right now, I want you, and I'm going to put this link below. I want you to check out smartvestapro.com. If you just have 500, 200 bucks, if, if you're out of debt and you're ready to start investing, I want you to get with a financial expert that can help you start investing into your future. Okay. I promise you this much. If you do it, it'll be well. And here's the last thing that I've seen from all millionaires. Recently, my mentor, Dave Ramsey, um, invited me up to his house uh, to um, an event. And this event was all men 
um, who were successful. And I mean, we had artists there. He had uh, celebrities there. He had pastors there. He had uh, governors, former governors. Um, he had a lot of successful people. It was about 100 people. And everyone in that room were high achievers. Everyone in that room were thoroughbreds. Everyone in that room was doing something with their life. And when I looked around that room, I said, that's why Dave is so successful. Not just because of him and not just because of his amazing team, but outside of his work, outside of his day to day life, he actually chills with people who actually help build his brain and, and help challenge him in certain areas. And I, I, he's chilling around billionaires and Dave is a multi-millionaire. And so these billionaires are bringing him up. And I'm like, yo, I'm sticking with Dave because if he's going to become a billionaire, he's going to pull me up. I'm going to be a millionaire. And with me being a millionaire, I'm going to pull somebody else up so they could be in high six figures. And when I become a multi-millionaire, I want to bring someone up to be a millionaire. You see what I'm saying? Millionaires get around other high achievers. Millionaires get around people who are smarter than them, stronger than them, better than them, wiser than them, because they want to go higher. I love being around people who make me feel not as smart. Because when I learn something, I take the sheet of paper, I write this stuff down, I go home and I start studying. Millionaires. And I'm not saying this for all millionaires because you know what? Here's the truth. Not all millionaires do this. Some people weren't won the lottery. Some people got an inheritance check. Yeah, I get it. But everyday millionaires, millionaires who work hard are being wise and good stewards with their resources. And not just their resources of money, but of their brain, which is their business, of their relationships, which is their squad. What are you going to do? Do you even want to become a millionaire? As a matter of fact, forget that. Do you want to become successful? Let's take millionaires out of this. Do you want to become successful? I want you to think about that tonight. And I want you to ask yourself, okay, what's your definition of success? I want you to cut off the phone. I want you to cut off the TV. Tell your girlfriend, tell your boyfriend, tell your roommates, tell your family members. Hey, just let me just chill tonight. Lay in the dark, lay back and ask yourself, what does success look like to me? Is that a million dollars? Is, is, is that a home? Is, is, is that a family individual? Like, what defines success for you? And if you really want to be a millionaire, I want you tonight, write down the vision, set some goals, followed by some daily habits. And here's the last thing. Keep rocking with your boy. Cause your boy, I'm gonna help you get there. Cause I'm telling you right now, I'm no millionaire. I am not a millionaire, but I'm right around the corner from it. And I'm telling you right now, I'm teaching everybody what I'm learning. I'm, t I'm, I'm an open book because I believe if we all can sit here and serve and help each other, we all can win. So keep rocking with your boy. Yo, thanks so much for rocking with me. As a matter of fact, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are someone who is, you know, I want to start a business um, and, and, and you really want to learn what to do with your finances when it comes to that business, I'm going to drop this link below. I want you to go to teachable.com forward slash um, Anthony, teachable.com forward slash Anthony, uh, because um, here in a couple of days, I'm actually going to be on Teachable for a conference with myself, Gary V, and some other big names. I'm just really talking to young entrepreneurs, young millennials about, hey, how do we get our money? How do we grow our business? How do we avoid debt? How do we live below our means? But watch this and still enjoy life. How can I buy the Louis Vuitton bag and still be living below my means? And so I'm going to be approaching uh, something different that, you know, uh, Teachable has never done. Uh, when they invited me to come and be a part of this, I told them up front, hey, I don't do that. And they was like, no, I think this is the message that our young people need. And so if you're in the 20s, 30s or 40s, yo, come check us out. I'm going to drop that link below. Teachable.com forward slash Anthony is going to be amazing. 
We're going to be teaching millionaires. We're going to be teaching people how to become millionaires. <laughs> and you know, Gary Vee, unique individual, but I got to say, he's a very successful guy. And so why not get some wisdom? All right. So it's your boy, Anthony O'Neill. You guys already know. We keep it real, relevant, and relatable right here at the table every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Share this with someone, and I'm going to see you on the next video. Peace out.